All right then, ladies and gentlemen, here is the new version of the blockchain bloat video. I've taken the previous version down uh, in order to improve it. So I watched it a few times myself, read all the comments, thought, mm, don't like it. It's just not to my standards. So I'm not, I'm not above deleting a YouTube video and redoing it. I'm not too proud to do that. So that's what I did. So here's the new and improved version. So if you're coming to this for the first time, we're going to talk about what is blockchain bloat and what are the solutions. And that's a slightly different title from last time, but it all stems from this article that was posted on News BTC about EOS, EOS scaling issues and their impact on the blockchain, which was sort of a misleading article in many ways because it talked about how the EOS blockchain has grown to four terabytes and then EOS New York was like, no, it's not four terabytes. It's actually 200 gigabytes and so on. So we'll get into all this in a mo. So um, like I said in the first version of the video, I'd really appreciate if you would become a supporter. I've had to do away with the green screen because it's such a mess about. The quality of this shot is a lot better if I don't mess about with the, the effects. But if I had a better camera, I'd be able to do the effects. So check out thecryptoverse.show. Click on the blue button, support the show. Sign up as a patron and... Uh, Watch this four minute trailer because it'll explain to you how when you become a patron, you'll end up getting about 60% of the money that you pledge in support. You'll get about 60% of that back in cryptocurrency rewards using my cryptocurrency rewards system. Never mind that. Watch the trailer and it'll explain how that works. You'll be able to support me and get sort of crypto cash back essentially using this like ingenious system that I've designed. So let's um, let's go to my little presentation that I've created for you. You know, like I do, create your living presentation. All right, let's launch the presentation. So same title as last time, fast blockchains when yesterday's solutions become today's problems. Uh, a lot of on-chain transactions leads to bloat. So blockchain technology, its strength is also its weakness, right? Open blockchains provide, this is what we want, an immutable public record of transactions going back to their very genesis. That's the whole thing about blockchains. You can go back to the beginning of the Bitcoin blockchain and see everything in every moment, right? So in order to have immutability and transparency and openness, it requires every transaction to be stored in order to capture the exact state of the ledger in any moment that you might want to query. And this allows us to go back to any point in history, like it says in point three, to see the exact state. And I've defined that as the account balances of the ledger for auditing purposes. And this is what makes it a trustless system. Anyone can get a full copy of the blockchain and audit it themselves. So on Bitcoin, Bitcoin is very simple. It's got simple transactions, simple transactions. And um, when you record a Bitcoin transaction, it's literally, this was the account balance of the sender. This was the account balance of the receiver. And now this is the updated account balance of the sender and the updated account balance of the receiver because person A sent to person B. So person A's account balance goes down, the person B's balance goes up. That's it. Very simple. So it's a bit different when we get into smart contracts and processing operations, but we'll um, we'll uh, skip that for the time being. So traditional databases versus blockchains. Here's my, the simplest definition of a blockchain would be a decentralized, full consensus, append-only database with a full audit trail. So full consensus is one of the key things. It prevents anyone from tampering with the data. That's what makes it immutable, right? You'd have to corrupt everybody in the system uh, in order to break the consensus, right? Because everyone would be in consensus, but if someone tries to cheat, you have to convince everyone else to cheat and that's now impossible. And that's thanks to decentralization, right? If you decentralize it, the people don't even know who each other are even, so you couldn't corrupt them. So that's that bit. The append-only database bit means that it's not just uh, amend where you load the data, change it and save it again. You have to add the data onto the end of the transaction ledger. And that's how you get a full audit trail, right? But you have to save all that data, which is the bloat we're going to be talking about. So with a traditional database, you may only need to know the current state, you know, right? But uh, you don't need to record every single change historically. So then you just make a second copy of the database that we call the backup, which we do periodically, so that in case anything goes skew if, you can restore it. So the backup is like a snapshot in time, like daily backup. So if I wanted to go back to yesterday's state, I could do. And, you know, most businesses, well, they have like a 30-day 
Um, they back it up every day and then they have a 30 day archive. So you could go back, you know, up to 30 days in the past. So it's relatively cheap to do. You don't need full history of all your company's backups to the beginning of it, do you? So moving on. So the double edged sort of fast blockchains. One of the criticisms of Bitcoin is, well, it only does three transactions a second. And one of the criticisms of Ethereum is, well, it only does 15, tra 15 transactions a second. What about visa level, right? We need to get to visa level scale, 40,000 transactions a second, etc. It's so like, okay, but because with blockchains, we're storing everything and all of the things historically, the more transactions we do, that's just more stuff to save. And that's what I've put here. So quote, okay, if a blockchain, if a blockchain does a sustained 10,000 transactions a second, that's 10,000 extra transactions per second that need storing forever. So yeah, great. We can do 10,000 10, transactions in this second. Well, we need to save that forever. And then the next second, another 10,000 transactions are created. We need to save that forever as well. So what, it only takes one second to create 10,000 new bits of data that have to be stored forever <laughs> if we want to have an open, public, transparent, immutable blockchain, which Bitcoin is, right? And EOS is, right? So anyway, moving on. The recent EOS FUD from this article, basically the FUD was triggered from this article. So basically in the nine months since the launch of the EOS blockchain, it has grown to 200 gigabytes. So that's like all the record of changes in states and account balances. And I've put there required to maintain consensus. The second bullet point says it's four terabytes if you keep a full record of every single action within every transaction, which is the basis of the FUD. Now let me break that down. If you look at blocktivity.info, this is a website that records like it has a league of what are the blockchains doing the most transactions, second most transactions and so on. And it used to list like how many transactions, TX, it is a blockchain doing every day. But then the smart contract platforms came along like EOS and were showing five, six, seven million transactions a day. And people were criticizing that metric going, well, hang on a minute. In an EOS transaction, there are multiple actions that can be performed because it's an, because we're communicating with like dApps, decentralized applications. And you might send a request to an app. So that's the transaction. But when the app gets the transaction, it opens it up and it has several different things to process. So it might have five actions in a single transaction. So people were saying, well, that's misrepresent misrepresenting it. If EOS is showing us, five million transactions a day um that might be five thousand actions five five million actions a day but only a, th a million transactions so so basically now when you go to blocktivity it shows number of operations so the point of saying that is that you think at the beginning and event at the end of the transaction is kind of like in bitcoin all you really care about is you know what was the state of the ledger at the beginning of the transaction what was the state of the ledger after the transaction? Now, what all, the, all the actions in the middle, account data manipulation, and I rolled the dice and I did this and I did that and did the other, right? That's all great, fine. But in order to maintain consensus, everyone needs to agree on the account balances. So strictly, you only need to store the 200 gigabytes of data on the EOS blockchain for the system to maintain consensus, right? The four gigabyte number is technically how much storage is required for a full copy of everything, every single action, every single, 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 single thing that was processed and action that was taken, right? Now, why would you need that? Well, if you want to search like everything that happened on the EOS blockchain to the beginning of time, fine. It's four, it's four gigabytes, it's four, four terabytes, big button. Um, but if, if you just want to store the minimum required information to main consensus in the system, it's 200 gigabytes. So those are the two numbers. So we can still operate the EOS blockchain with 200 gigabytes, right, of the current, current state of it. So what I did then was I took 200 gigabytes, did, divided it by the nine months that EOS has been live, and you get... 22.22 gigabytes a month it's grown by on average right so if you trend that out and assume that you know in a linear progression if the EOS blockchain grows by 22.22 gigabytes per month 
then it ends up being 266 gigabytes at the end of year one, 533 gigabytes at the end of year two, and 799 gigabytes at the end of year three. Now, bearing in mind, that is a linear progression, okay? And I'm, and I'm also using the blockchain size that's only required for consensus. So yes, Mr. Kelly, sorry. I get my gigabytes and my terabytes mixed up sometimes, but that's why you should be looking at the slides because that's the, the the last word. So the problem of blockchain bloat then, here's another slide for you. As blockchains get bigger, two problems appear, or actually three problems appear. Um, one's kind of two of the same thing. The first problem is storing the increasing amount of data, and that kind of has a sub problem, which is the initial blockchain download. So like if you want to run a full Bitcoin node, you have to do the IBD, the initial blockchain download, because you log onto the network as a brand new node, you have to download a copy of the entire blockchain from eight of your nodes that are nearby, right? So that's one and the same problem. It's storing the data as an individual full node, but it's also that initial blockchain download. You might need to sit there and download 200 gigabytes of data to get up to speed with the rest of the network. So you're not really in consensus until you've got all of that data. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is the bandwidth that's consumed, not just by the initial blockchain download, but by the current transactions per second needed to maintain consensus in real time. So, you know, um, if you're doing 10,000 transactions a second, how much bandwidth does that consume, right? Because it, it has to propagate across all the nodes that are in consensus, right, as fast as possible, which, you know, is what the gossip protocol is for and things like that. So that's another consideration. And then finally, I've put here that Bitcoin SV, they are pioneering research on big blocks, right? They are they're doing research on like mass on-chain scaling. Uh, so they actually have this 64 megabyte block that was mined on their public blockchain this year in 2019. And according to BitcoinSV.io, the website, that was the world's largest block that was mined on a public blockchain to date. So uh, if you want to learn more about big block research, BitcoinSV.io is the destination. So what are some solutions then? So solution number one, as suggested by a YouTube comment from the previous version of this video, well, let's just use the Lightning Network. Okay, my response to that is, okay, fine, but that's off-chain, meaning it's not public, it's not transparent, and it's not provably immutable because only a single transaction that opens a Lightning channel and only the single transaction that settles the channel is on-chain and therefore public, transparent, and immutable. Kind of like, you know, all the operations that happen in an EOS transaction, I suppose. All the stuff that happens inside a channel is lost when you close it, right? Because it settles and all of that, all that back and forth inside the channel is destroyed, right? It's not recorded anywhere. The only, the only thing that is recorded is the opening of the channel and the closing of the channel. And what happens inside it is private, it's not transparent, it's not immutable, it's not saved anywhere. So that's not really what we're talking about here. Um, an off-chain transaction is very different to an on-chain transaction because you don't get the publicity, the transparency, the immutability, and so on, and the auditability. So that's not really a solution to the, if you want those kinds of things. Number two, this is one of my suggestions. We accept the fact that blockchain technology is a tool for when immutability, transparency, and openness are the top priorities, and where a performance hit is an acceptable price to pay for those traits. And if that's the case, well, at least we've still invented a really useful new technology that solves problems we put, couldn't previously solve, like absolute immutability, trustlessness, transparency, openness, and all the rest of it, you know? Here's another one. Solution number three, also my suggestion, sharding, which is to split the blockchain up into what I'm calling districts, right? Side chains, you know, copies of EOS or copies of of uh, Ethereum that link to the main chain. So you could have like the gambling district, you know, the gambling chain. You could have another version of EOS or Ethereum that was the social network chain. You could even do this down to the app level. So that each individual app, like decentralized app, would have its own blockchain with its own block producers and so on and so forth and its own set of resources, right? But I've put as a sub a bullet point there, 
that's great. However, the economic model still needs to work within that subsystem, meaning the economic value that's brought into that system in terms of the value it's providing, the app, the social network, the gambling apps, whatever, the load on the blockchain still, you still need to pay for the storage and the bandwidth and it still needs to work. So, you know, pulling out the, it as a side chain, the problems are still there, especially if that side chain explodes in popularity. You're right back to where you started. So that's, um, that's an issue. And number four, this is also Mike D from a YouTube comment says, just use Cardano because apparently the Byron and the Shelley releases of Cardano are addressing these very problems. Well, the only thing I've got to say to that is I need to study these in order to comment because I don't know enough about Shelley or Byron releases on Cardano to say anything intelligent about it. So I'll keep it zipped at that point. So there we jolly well go. That's the extent of the content. Um, just going to check the chat. Someone's like, again, Chris? Yes, I've deleted the old one. Well, um, okay, four terabytes. Yes, made, made a faux pas there. Okay, great. All good. So that is all I've got for you for this video. If you like this episode, please go ahead and hit the old like button. If you really liked it, hit the old subscribe button and hit the bell. Look at that, a new icon. Hit the subscribe button if you would. And also please participate in my new, it's not new, I've had it for a while, but please participate in my newfangled uh, support system where you can basically accumulate cryptocurrency by being a supporter. So all you do is go over to the website, thecryptoverse.show, click on the blue support the show button and uh, become one of my patrons here. We've got 65 patrons currently pledging $484 a month. If you, um, if you watch this four minute trailer, it will explain to you exactly how this reward scheme works. And I, and I did actually work it out recently. The people who are participating in this scheme are getting about 60% of the money they pledge in support um, back as rewards. So there's got to be some loss in the system because I need to take some out to support the show, right? So it can't all come back to you, right? It's not 100% return on investment. But accumulating crypto now is a good idea because we're in the doldrums. So when we take off again, It'll pay off. <laughs> all right. That's all I've got for you today. I'll be back with the next episode of the Cryptoverse. So until then, it's me, Chris Coney, saying bye for now.